Hey, welcome to iFlip for Math MathCast, Lesson 12-4, Area of Squares and Rectangles. I'm Mrs. Gooding, and our quote tonight is by Marcus Vitruvius Polio. He lived in ancient Roman times, like between the years 70 and about 20 BCE, so a really, really long time ago, but he was this amazing architect. He loved to design buildings. Um, they, um, his quote is, nothing requires the architect's care more than the due proportions of buildings, meaning you've got to get the measurements right. You've got to get the area and the perimeter set up correctly, or your buildings, your walls aren't going to match up, your ceiling's not going to cover everything. And of course, his designs were incredibly intricate, fabulous, humongous designs. So um, our learning goal tonight is to use the area formula to find the area of squares and rectangles. There's the book that he wrote. It had to do with the 10 important things about architecture. So it's very detailed and I'm pretty sure it's all in Latin. Um, and there's a coin with his picture on it. When you did really cool things back in ancient Rome, you got your picture on a coin, which would be pretty cool if I had my picture on a coin, but I'm, oh well. <laughs> Tonight we're gonna use the formula for area to find the area of squares and rectangles. The formula for area is area equals length times width. And I wrote it out in words so that you can see it actually. We're going to use the symbols, letters as symbols, to represent those in our formula. So our area is a capital A, like our perimeter was a capital P, and like our volume will be a capital V. Our length times width, though, are lowercase letters. And honestly, if I was writing that on my paper, I would use a cursive lowercase l because I don't want you to get that um, L confused with a one. It's not a one, it's an L for length. So think about that, you may wanna do that too. One of the things that you really need to know about um, writing about your area is that we're going to show that it's not, we're not just measuring the length now, we're not in the first dimension only now. We're measuring two dimensions, the dimension of length and the dimension of width. So we're in the second dimension. Um, or in two-dimensional figures. So we are going to put a little two, length and width, that's two dimensions. We're gonna put a little two after the unit of measure, not after the number. If we put that two after the number of units, then we would have to square that number, which would not give us the correct answer. So the little two, the exponent, goes after the unit of measure, showing that instead of just a foot long, it's a square foot. Instead of just a meter long, it's a square meter. We looked at that a little bit when we were doing our Pythagorean theorem the other day, and we took that triangle, and on each line segment, we made a square of it. Um, and then we drew the little a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So it's that same idea. So let's keep going. Here's our vocabulary for today. Area, that's our vocabulary for today. The area is the amount of surface a figure covers. The area of your desk is just that top surface, the whole part of it. We we're talking about the difference between perimeter and area. Remember, perimeter was side, 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 and we add up all the lengths of the sides. It's like a fence going around a garden. But the area is like putting a carpet on your floor. You wanna measure the entire floor so that your carpet covers all of the floor, not just around the wall on the outside. So area is always, we kind of used to say area all, because we're measuring all of the surface. Perimeter is side, 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 area is all. So that is some more pages from Vitruvius's books. And even though that's not necessarily a building that he designed, it is a really cool amphitheater from ancient Rome. They had some amazing architecture back then. It inspires architecture today. Here is our first example. That's the Pantheon in Rome. And even though he didn't design that building, that building is based on Vitruvius's design beliefs and philosophies. So, and there's also a blueprint from one of the buildings he did design. You can see a figure there, a two-dimensional figure. And we are going to find the area of a square with sides of four feet each. I went ahead and squared out each of the lengths. So if you're looking at one side with a length of four feet, it's actually four square feet. And each side would have four square feet. And then in the middle are square feet as well, because we can't leave that area, that surface area in the middle out. So instead of adding up four feet plus four feet plus four feet plus four feet, 
we're actually going to multiply 4 times 4, and we get 16. So area equals length times width. Area equals 4 times 4, so area equals 16 square feet. And you could actually count those squares, and you can see that there are 16 square feet. They're actually squares. When we say square feet, we're not kidding. We mean squares that are a foot wide and a foot long. And there is our final way to write it. You can write it 16 square feet in words if that's easier for you. But it's more sophisticated to write it 16 square feet. And we say the square first, even though we write it after the feet. That little two means squared. There's Vitruvius presenting one of his designs to Caesar. And here's our second example. And this is going to be a rectangle. Find the area of a rectangle where the length is six feet and the width is three feet. Know that in real life, generally, you won't know, you won't see those little squares drawn out. So if I'm buying carpet for my classroom, I may know that the length of my classroom is six feet and the width is three feet. That would be a really small classroom, but um, I'm not gonna see all those little squares and be able to count them. We can count them here to verify it but I'm gonna to need to use my formula to figure it out. And that would be area equals length times width. So the length is six feet, the width is three feet. So area equals six times three. The area equals 18 square feet. And let's look for the sophisticated way to write it. Area equals 18 square feet. Now we're gonna do some practices. Do you like how my little squares are all over the page? That is the Colosseum. I think it's a fabulous picture of the Colosseum. I really wanna go there someday. Number one, find the area of a rectangle where the length is 12 meters and the width is six meters. Now that's not that square that it's showing you or the rectangle at the bottom of the page. You can draw this on your paper if it would help you. Draw a rectangle and label the length 12 meters and the width six meters. Um, and then think about your formula Substitute your numbers for the letters in the formula. Pause it and push play when you've solved it. Did you write 72 square meters? That's the sophisticated way of writing it, isn't it? Six times 12 is 72. Number two, find the area of a square where the length of one side is 35 millimeters. Hmm, it's a square that should give you some important information about what the length and width of that square are. Pause it and push play when you figured it out. Did you write 140 millimeters squared? 35 times 35, because remember, in a square, all sides have the same length. So 35 times 35 is 140 millimeters squared, or 140 square millimeters. Find the area of the rectangle at the bottom of your screen. The length is 14 feet, the width is three feet. Pause it and push play when you're ready. Did you write 42 square feet? 14 times three is 42, so 42 square feet. Area equals length times width is a really fun formula to use. It's one of my favorites until we get to volume and then you'll really have fun with that one. Here are some practice word problems. That is a statue of Vitruvius when he was a soldier. He was actually a soldier in, for both um, Julius Caesar and Augustus Caesar. So he actually served under two Caesars in ancient Rome. And that is the inside of the Pantheon I was telling you about. See how you could stand in the middle and just look straight up at that circle? They say when it rains, the rain will just come through in a little circle on the ground and there'll be a puddle and the rest of it's all dry. I wanna see that. If the length of our classroom is 42 feet and the width is 38 feet, what is the area of our classroom? Pause it and push play when you're ready. Did you write 1,596 square feet or the more sophisticated answer, 1,569 square feet? I say those the same, but they're written differently, aren't they? Remember, area equals length times width, so area equals 42 times 38, which equals 1,596. We're getting some good multiplication practice, too, in this lesson. It's 
time to challenge yourself. That is the inside of the Colosseum. Find the total area of the apartment shown. And I'm talking about the blue apartment floor plan over there, not the Colosseum. The area of the Colosseum is really huge. In fact, it's amazing to think that they were able to actually cover that with kind of um, sails that pulled together at the top to shade people. It would have been really hot in ancient Rome on a, on a warm day. And so they had to be very creative in designing a cover for the roof, which is absolutely unbelievable. It's such a huge, huge building. Go ahead and use what you know in that picture. And um, not all of the numbers are written out obviously for you. So you'll have to really just really think about what you're looking at. And then come back tomorrow, show your work in your journal, and we will check it out. I hope everyone tries the challenge problem tonight. Challenge problems are really good for growing muscles in your brain. Finishing up, there's some more designs from his book. Um, review your learning goals. How are you doing on area? Are you able to know what to do differently when you're solving for perimeter and solving for area? I really wanna make sure you have it down because when you get to volume, you're gonna need those things to do some of the figuring. Write down any questions you still have, and awesome, you've completed lesson 12-4, area of squares and rectangles. I can't wait to see you tomorrow.